on the potential positive effect of shortening feedback loops in content creation. A very simple example in the beginning. If I have my phone and I record myself, I can see myself on here while recording. Therefore, all the time I can check the image. So what cannot really happen is that I, for example, in the other scenario, use the rear camera and film myself for an hour and then I would realize I'm not even in the image some of the time. I basically introduced a constant quality control by constantly looking at my screen. And this is what a shortened feedback loop in principle therefore could potentially be or create in terms of positive change. Now, recently I had a few epiphanies again and these epiphanies resulted in now the following scenario. In terms of content creation, I see a few things. Previously, I said, okay, whenever I record something, I want to have a certain schedule. That certain schedule is ideally the certain, the basically identical to the production frequency. If for a certain channel, I make a video on average about every week, then ideally the output schedule is delayed or maybe not delayed, but it is also weekly because my production frequency, of course, cannot, the output frequency in the long term should not be lower as the production frequency because otherwise you might run out of content. And if you run out of content, then the algorithms or the algorithmic gods might not like you anymore. So for this reason, in order to basically have 100% uh, adherence, it might make sense to have the output rate, maybe posting a video once a week, the posting rate you could also see, to be slightly lower or equal compared to the production rate. Now, one problem is that the more delayed this whole thing gets. So, of course, you cannot post instantly. If you record something, then there is a time delay. And depending on how long this time delay is, this also means that the content of the video itself might also suffer from, or the quality of the content might suffer from this time delay. If I say, for example, the beginning of the year 2020, 2030, let's just say, 2020, 2030, if this is the beginning of the year 2030 and I make new year resolutions, then um, a few months from now, of course, it's not the beginning of 2030, but I just realized that I will not be able to post this today or the next day and I still have a few videos in 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 stack. Basically, I have a few videos pre-recorded and this also means that if I still want to post them chronologically, this video might be only appear on your feed in a few months. And if I then say the beginning of 2020 or 2021 or 2022 or 2023, so now it's 2023, but this might act as a sign for you to say, okay, this video is old. And this also might mean that this video is not relevant anymore because sometimes things are only relevant in a very short time frame. Some, something is trending on Twitter. There are elections in a certain country. There is a new Galaxy phone coming out. And of course this is relevant two years from now, but not so relevant as it was now now as the phone came out. So actually a new Galaxy came out a few weeks ago, actually. Actually, actually, actually. So now I use this principle that I already use in terms of recording the videos themselves. And I wanted to introduce this principle to also the content scheduling. So first of all, here are the things I'm doing while recording. I do see myself on my screen. I have basically one of my phones directly in front of me, as you can see on the mirror here, which is on my phone, which creates an infinite mirror loop. Now, I can constantly see myself. I can check whether I'm over or underexposed in terms of in intelligence, probably more on the underside. And this allows me to know when a video is finished, I know what it sounds like, I know what it looks like. So how do I know what it sounds like? Because I also constantly quality check the sound. I have an earplug in one of my ears because I noticed whenever I have the sound in both of my ears that I begin to speak like this in order to optimize my voice for, for crispiness. So if I only have it in one ear, I can kind of hear what my normal speaking voice would sound like and not have basically already the finished product in here. So it's basically half and half in terms of my own perception. I also have, so if you have an earplug in, 
compared to if you don't have an ear plug-in. What, what also happens is that you hear certain vibrations, so certain frequencies of your own voice that is resonating in your head, for example, or in the rest of your body, differently. And another, another aspect is that I cannot hear environmental sounds around me that much. I hear my voice more, therefore I can concentrate on what I'm saying more, and I don't have that many associations or possible triggers for thoughts I would otherwise have if I didn't have earplugs in. So I have usually wear an earplug, at least in this setup, on one side, and on the other side I listen to the audio. Since the audio is also recorded in mono, so basically it's only one channel and not meant for both ears and differently, because your ears pick up actually signals differently. If there is a, a audio source, like here, then of course the sound travels with a certain speed to this ear, faster than to the other ear. So therefore there is a difference in sound amplitude, so how loud something is perceived, but there is also just a difference in when it is perceived. And this per difference allows your head to calculate where things are coming from, in front of you or on the side of you. So by switching to mono, this basically means that both channels, if you are wearing headphones or not, are basically the same and this also allows me to quality control this with mono with only one ear. Otherwise I would have to have stereo. But also sometimes people might only have one headphone in or might not hear on one ear as good as on the other one. So therefore I think mono kind of is the simpler version to go for. So therefore I'm constantly controlling and seeing also. Within basically a fractions of a second, I can see whether my hand moves here or not. I can see whether this is in frame or not. And if I look up like this all the time, or if I record myself walking, then often I notice after a few seconds that I'm not in frame anymore. But here, I notice that, I'm, that I am in frame or not in frame. I can see the final product. I basically am watching the final product as it is right now, because I am seeing it and I'm listening to it. So basically, while I'm recording this, I'm simultaneously consuming it. It's a paradox. But if I just recorded on my, myself on a camera with a tinier screen, then this would be the case so much. So now, in terms of content production, here is kind of how it looked like in the past. I used to think that I just take the historic production rate, so let's say for a podcast, for example, I had with a friend. This was one of my first products project, you could say. Um, I did not really know how this project would go. So we just recorded a few episodes and then I needed to figure out a pro a basically a posting schedule because you wanted to optimize these algorithms and also similar to the analogy of social media or a content creator or a channel just being a store. When does it have open? What does it serve? So you want to have a certain format maybe, a certain type of content you make about a certain kind of topic and it should appear ideally in a certain frequency that is then similar to from one to the other because then people can establish their habits which might not benefit them if it's bad content but it might benefit them if it's good content. If I establish a routine of listening to the Huberman Lab podcast for example at a certain time of the day and I can because there is always a certain frequency of new content that is delivered every few days, for example, in terms of the Huberman Lab podcast, then over time I have this routine and over time I might improve from the things I learn or I might implement even a few of the things I learned. So therefore, now I had to figure out how to post these. And of course, I had to also make an assumption on my future production rate or our future production rate of these episodes. What I figured initially was to just use the heuristics of time we already have. So in terms of a posting schedule, this could mean you post it once a year. This could mean you post it once a quarter, but of course a quarter is not used that much. So you also could post it once a month. You could also post it bi-weekly, but bi-weekly doesn't even have a word in in the different scenarios. For example, you can also not say something like bi-quarterly. Bi-weekly, does it mean twice a week or does it mean every two weeks? Every two weeks would be bi-monthly, obviously. So bi-monthly would be a word that most people would understand, but it's not a word that is often used. So therefore, I think things, so time intervals that make sense would be yearly. Then you just switch to monthly. If you cannot do monthly, but you are able to do weekly, then you are, then you just take weekly or daily. So these are the different simplifications I came up. So if I now say, okay, 
I do write on a certain topic and I cannot intermingle this topic with another topic on another channel I have. Then, but I only output this once a year, then this would be yearly. But of course with yearly videos, for example, you might not be able to build up that much of an audience. But given, for example, there are weekly, there are yearly videos, even videos that only appear every two years or three years, and people still go to these things, to these videos, and you can even watch them in, in very specific places called cinemas and movies, then again, this might make sense. So therefore, the very increased quality, seemingly, kind of justifies the yearly schedule, or at least it seems to work to a certain extent. Now, you could also make movies monthly, but currently many people cannot make movies monthly. Even the best directors seem to be unable to do so, to do to basically make something similar in quality to the yearly one, given they are also constrained in, in financial and intellectual resources. This just seems to be the compromise they are working with, or we all are working with. So now, the problem with something that is yearly or appears every two years is that you have to delay your gratification, but also your feedback loop very, 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 very much. And this might not be beneficial because let's take something like the 10,000 hour rule. The idea behind this is simplified. If you put 10,000 hours of effective work into something like playing the piano, then you might get very good at it. So 10,000 hours seems to be the threshold where some development is happening where you then get good at it. So you might, in the beginning, for example, if this is your skill and this is time, then, as, then for example, you might only increase your skill level linearly and then it might go this. In practice, probably skill levels usually look more like this. In the beginning, you increase you are able to up your skill a lot, 80-20 also, and then it basically goes into an asymptote that is then a certain skill level. It becomes harder and harder to increase your absolute and also relative skill more and more. So therefore, your relative skill increase, your marginal skill increase with an additional unit of time, of course, given in a certain frequency, in a certain week, for example, because there are also parts of your week which you have to use to maintain that skill level. So therefore, you have to sacrifice, would have to sacrifice more and more of your time to play piano and maybe not go out anymore and play piano. Maybe don't eat anymore and play piano. Of course, ridiculous. But nonetheless, you would have to increase basically the rate at which you, you um, work at these things in order to not, again, decrease your capability capability level of playing the piano. What I'm trying to say here is this. If we have 10,000 hours of putting work into something, then the assumption also is that this is something that improves with time. That just within a certain unit of you being able to figure things out improves. But this only works for predictable scenarios where the brain actually can learn similar to how Algorithms today, like a large language model or also a social media feed algorithm might learn. They learn by seeing the historic data and then trying to extrapolate future data. So by trying to basically make a prognosis or a, an assumption about future data or future behavior. Now, given the fact that we all operate on a certain time scale, The more marginal in time the feedback loop basically is, the better you can learn. Given again that this is something you can actually learn. So for example, a turkey learns every single day that he doesn't die and gets food until he dies because it's Thanksgiving. So therefore, the feedback loop just led to uh, extrapolation to a future prediction or a prediction of the future that was just not very fortunate in this case. So what I'm trying to say is that there are things that you cannot really predict and in these unpredictable scenarios it might not be beneficial to just put more, to just throw more time into it. But given that something is kind of learnable with time, that you can improve your skill level over time, then shortening the feedback loop. So let's just imagine 
every time a piano player hit a key, one year after it, he would hear it. Not very nice, because you would have to wait a year and then you probably couldn't remember anymore. If you shorten it down to a month, a week, a day, an hour, a second, a millisecond, for example, and you can already hear it. Millisecond probably is too small, because sound doesn't travel that fast. Then the feedback loop is closer and closer and closer and closer, and you can let learn better and better and better. And this is the whole principle I now applied to my content schedule. Given also that another argument is that I also wanted to decrease the negative effect of pre-producing content in terms of how current it is. So if I make a video about a certain event, so for example, I made a video about Neuralink, the new presentation, and it came out a th maybe two months or three months after the event happened, because I just didn't manage to distribute the video earlier, because there was just a stack of videos that were before, and I usually try to post chronologically, if that makes sense. Of course, I can also do that manually, but just chronologically means that I don't have to optimize for the different videos, because the chronological thing is already a pretty good assumption, or already a pretty good default sorting algorithm, you could say, because as time develops and because things develop, especially in areas where things actually develop and are not very constant and static and evergreen in terms of content production, this might just be uh, a good default, the chronological posting. So given that something is a 10,000 hour skill you can learn, given that tightening the feedback loop probably means that you can learn better, and also given that there is something else that is happening, which is how likely you are to actually make something. And this, I would argue, is largely influenced by the confirmation bias you might get or not get. If we just assume feedback is just in general positive or negative, then if you get a comment, for example, saying, OK, this video is total crap, and you mumble all the time, then you, if you post this within a day, the next video on the next day can already be improved. If you now still are pre-producing and you're producing again and again, similar to how you would record for an hour without the camera being turned on, for example, or without the audio being turned on because you cannot monitor the audio. They used to be actually on the camera on the Galaxy phone, they used to be a, a visual of the audio moving, which now it doesn't is not here anymore. And this allowed me to check whether audio is actually recorded. And in the beginning of every video on my Galaxy S10, it says, if I have an external mic recorded, external mic recorded. And this could I use in order to then see directly if the video already has the recorded external audio. And sometimes it happens that it is not correct, not connected, probably, probably. And I just wondered if it is, but it seems to be. And then I have bad audio quality because only the internal microphone picks it up. In short, the feedback loop, the more infinitely small it is, the more you can react to it. If you produce a certain rate of videos or a certain rate of blog posts or a certain rate of tweets, or you make a certain rate of movies, every five years or every three years in terms of Christopher Nolan maybe, then the lower the frequency of the posting schedule, the, the, the earlier you can react to it and you can make changes and adapt what you otherwise would record. If I record seven days in a given week and only take a look at the footage afterwards, then I can only do something to improve the whole thing and maybe I have to re-record the whole thing in the next week. But if I post daily, or at least I record daily and I look, take a look at the footage afterwards and also the audio, then I already can make changes in the next day. Let's just say at the end of the day you take a look at all the videos. If I then shorten this even more and say every video after I record it is already viewed, then this even is a more a better improvement. And if I already am seeing basically the live preview of what the video will look like exactly on my phone as I'm watching it, because it's basically the same format. Of course, my phone has 9 by 
18 as an aspect ratio and the video I record is 16 by nine, or rather 9 by 16 because it's portrait but I'm seeing the exact thing I would see if I would stream this from the internet and this is just remarkable I think and now I applied the same to all the different posting schedules I had so previously for shorts and also for short texts you could also see, say this is tweets or a Facebook post or an Instagram post which sometimes have visual information in form in the form of an image but sometimes they also have not so they are just visual because text is visual and images are visual but don't have a time domain attached to them this means of course they have a time domain of consumption but the initial thing can be can be basically photographed it can be photographed yeah, that's basically what one could say whereas video cannot be photographed it can only be recorded as video so it has a time scale a time domain to it which makes it also fixed in terms of the consumption time at least to some extent if you don't speed it up or lower the velocity of watching something so therefore in general i now have two different formats i do have visual based formats and i do have visual based formats that additionally have the time domain also known as video now, of course, there is also audio, but audio alone, I think it doesn't make that much sense anymore because for every piece of audio I would record, I also could record a video very easily just with the additional storage and attached to it, obviously, because video has higher storage needs compared to audio. And then I could already record the video. So therefore, why not record a video? Of course, there is something additional that audio sometimes, so, Here's the thing I currently am doing. I'm currently converting all the videos, the long videos I make as a podcast. And this podcast is also available on Spotify in video form. So I'm basically uploading the video to the podcasting backend of Spotify, which is called Anchor, which also delivers ideally my videos that also appear as videos on YouTube to podcast hosts. I decided to do this at least on this channel and maybe I do another scripted channel where I then optimize the whole thing for audio but I did this in the past and there is just if I can make a video about this and I can write about it and then make the video then I have two items compared to one and if I already record the video I also can use the information rate or the speaking rate of me speaking compared and I also have all the different visual elements compared to reducing my informational output down to writing which takes a lot more time per unit of information because i just write slower and therefore also then think slower probably so for the long blog post i had one for every channel for a month that was kind of the ideal i tried to adhere to which meant that i could not really react to anything i could not just write a blog post and here we again meet the third part so the first part is whether a skill is actually learnable. The second part then is the feedback loop. And the shorter it is, the better. And the third part is then what results out of this feedback loop is basically the things you, the changes you make. And within this here, within the third part is also the confirmation you get, the potential not confirmation you get. But there is just something very satisfying due to the reward structure of possibly the brain from posting something the next day I want to post. I also wanted to post in the past. I just didn't allow myself to. If I write something and I know that I can post it the next day, then this additionally sets a time frame that is much shorter. And this increases motivation somewhat, I would say. If very dopamine driven, I write something and I know that I can post it the next day then this has a much higher perceived value in me and in me finishing the whole thing I'm currently writing because I can post it the next day. People might see it, might see this thing I discovered or I thought about or I discovered on the internet and now I can talk about it and I'm fascinated by it. And people might see it the next day. I can show, I can send a link to a person this the next day. And then historically, what used to be the case was that, okay, I recorded this but I would probably only post it like two months and then it might be irrelevant and all the downsides just constantly appeared in my head and now I can post it. I decided to shorten basically the podcast. So previously I had this one podcast and we decided to do first. 
So we produced a few episodes and the frequency that resulted out of the production rate of the past was two months. So basically an, every, an episode every two months. Then we shortened it to one month and then I just said, okay, how about, I mean, not that we then didn't did record a lot of episodes any longer because it just uh, didn't happen to be that way. But I just said, okay, what if we try to approximate and also for my own channels, but if we try to approximate real time as much as possible. So therefore, the, instead of saying, okay, we have a stack of episodes, which we then post monthly, yearly, or whatever, chronologically, instead of this approach, what if we just shorten the time scale? So basically the approach doesn't change. You record something, then you have a few episodes, and then you schedule them according to your scheduling frequency. And you can also manually sort, which is also important because this means if I still have 10 videos, which I can post because I'm already record, I had them already recorded, but I now have something that I want to post now. And there is a video that came out and I want to post it the next day, which also in terms of trend hacking is kind of huge. So in the past, I couldn't trend hack, for example. I couldn't say, okay, this episode of Huberman is out and I react to it. Now I can not that much because I still am operating on a on a posting and distribution schedule that is, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks because I still have a, a stack of videos and my processes are just too slow. And I'm basically, within the given time I have, I cannot manage as much distribution as I re would record videos with the given constraints I have on video recording. So the podcast used to be monthly, the videos used to be weekly, and initially they also used to be monthly, but then I produced more and therefore I could match again the production frequency to the posting frequency or approximate them to each other. And now I decided these videos, I can post them the next day if I have them. It doesn't make that much sense to post them in the given day, but that's that would be the ideal. I could also post them in a given day, but what this doesn't optimize for or doesn't actually, or does at least not included in the optimization, is one variable, which means, which is the thing that some latency, of course, is also good. You have some time for reflection, potentially. And this is also something that is a benefit of a longer schedule or a schedule that is more latent, you could say. So there is more time in between the recording and the publishing date. And this benefit is that you can think about this again, if this actually makes sense. So a few weeks back, after already having switched this up years ago, but then I just wanted to standardize it again because of the distribution so much being so much easier just with, okay, this week, Monday, next week, Monday, and then you can say, okay, output the, the actual weekday of the date. And then you have a quality control in Notion that is basically the weekday. And if everything is Monday, 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 then I know it's the right date. But if it can be any date and if it can be any weekday, then this additional quality control cannot be there. In addition to posting chronologically and therefore knowing when a video is posted chronologically that it is the right order of videos compared to another scenario where you would make up a manual order, a manual sort, and then you would try to copy this to YouTube, for example, this manual sort with the video chronolo chron chronology, then you create by posting and you cannot post historically, therefore you create chronologically by posting something, then you create chrono, <laughs> you create chronology. Then it would be much harder to match those two because the additional quality control of chron chronologic order would be less valuable. And I also decided to have these blog posts. So these blog posts used to be also simultaneously the podcast because I wrote them in a way that I could also read them then later on. And I would read them in a speaker voice and then try to make this as good as an audio experience. As an audio experience that I as a possibly could without constantly mixing up words. And I decided to basically, first of all, with the normal channels, focus on video. In focus on videos, I would just make with notes, but not scripted, which would increase my output rate and my reaction rate because I 
don't have to first write something, which takes a few hours, and then I could only record it, but I could just press record and could have a few notes up here. Maybe in the future I also have visual overlays, maybe not, because that's probably reducing the, the it's increasing the hurdles for making a video. And so I decided finally, if I write something, I can post it the next day. If I have two written things, then I post it the next day and then the next day. So I try to not exceed one daily post because otherwise I eventually have to make as much content as I post. And if I don't wanna break the chain of posting, which I all the time do, nevertheless, the ideal is once daily. And if I can make 10 videos daily, then possibly I could post 10 videos daily. But if I have not been able to make 10 videos daily for a certain channel in a certain format for the last two years, then maybe I shouldn't post 10 daily because otherwise I'm running out of content soon or of time to produce this content. And this in short is how I used these principles that I already had set up here with the audio constantly listening and therefore quality controlling with the video constantly consuming it basically and watching it while I'm recording it and introduce them also kind of into the time scheduling or into the content scheduling and am trying to reduce this to zero basically so that this would be the ideal I record something and I'm able to post it of course then the latency also of you so the effect of the latency that is then allowing you to think about something again is also reduced to zero, which might not be ideal, but this is an entirely, not entirely different, but it's a different optimization. It's the optimization for what you actually want to put out. If I, and this all kind of came from posting short videos, first on TikTok, and I just realized that there is just so much more drive in me. This might be one of the reasons your favorite YouTuber just couldn't stop making videos because you post a video and then you might get this comment and you might get every video is basically a lottery ticket and until a video hits a certain threshold and of course every certain threshold it hits that is bigger than the threshold it hit before is new to you is exciting to you because that's the thing you want to do and therefore you already have proof you create proof by doing this already and not posting the video in three months you create proof i can do something now i can record a video and tomorrow it could have a thousand views. And this is something that allows you to therefore also use this motivation that also adds the very short time frame of you making this now. And if you make this now today, then you can post it tomorrow, which I think increases the motivation and the long-term drive I at least have for this. And therefore I decided also coming from shorts, but also from tweets, because I just allowed myself to just tweet whenever I wanted to, basically in real time, putting out notes on different subject, subjects I am interested in. And by tweeting in real time, this just gave me a sense of what it could feel like. Of course, there are also the downsides of you tweeting all the time, then and not doing anything else. But if this is in general useful and you wanna create videos or I want to create videos, therefore incentivizing me to make more and better of these. And of course, the more people watch them to a certain degree, the higher the quality of the video. Of course, these are not entirely correlated or to a certain extent only correlated. And there might also be other factors such as how controversial something is. But given my video format, and this is also something I chose. I chose this video format. I chose not to have a lot of visuals because the better I am at speaking, the better these videos get. And therefore, one of the main constraints is how skilled I am at speaking, how skilled I am at, I am at turning something interesting out of my life into something that is then interesting. And this also incentivizes me, incentivizes me to make interesting things in my life, to do interesting things in my life, like improving my health, like learning something new, like studying, and then again, I, can share something out of this. It's an incentive structure I created for myself and by changing, by shortening the, the schedule frequency at which I otherwise would post and by trying to approximate real time, I think this incentive, this incentive structure that I run in is more optimized.